You guys are good. You know what you're talking about. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, let's go, guys. And let's, welcome let's to another it. fun Friday edition of Ripping the Rack Podcast. Fun Friday. It's Friday. With me today. Well, actually, I should probably introduce myself. I am Tim. See, he did it again. It shows all about him now. Well, yeah, all it's about all me. About Tim. All I'm about not going to introduce anyone else because I'm going to speak for the next 45 minutes. Welcome to my TED Talk. Sounds good. Bye. Oh. On, on yeah, my later. left, on my left, uh, we have the Coastal Crusader, Mr. Brian Athern. How are you, buddy? I am excellent. It kind of feels weird being, you know, here in the show and in Colorado at the same time, right, Marky? <laughs> it is kind of weird. You know what I mean? How the hell am I at the bowling alley in Amesbury, but yet I'm also in Denver, Colorado, right now? That's right. Well, <laughs> let's weird. What skill you have? <laughs> let's. Let's put let's peel the layer back a little bit and just say that we're recording this early, folks. Oh, he broke the fourth wall. It's I oh, broke oh, the wall. Now they know. Now they know. Now they know. Hi, Cole Damn Cabana. <laughs> <laughs> Up on top is our northern uh, our northern assassin. He is the king oh. of the north, Mr. Calvin Locke. Gentlemen, how are you? And the north remembers. The North remembers. We and remember. on bottom, per usual, where his his Always hands down here. where his hands can roam free. Maki <laughs> pens. Our what resident. Do I, I what, do I, do with, what do I do with my hands right now? Maki, put your hands down. Okay, I put my hand. But what, Ca what, cargo real fast. What, what if yeah, they come yeah. back up and I don't? I still don't. They know scored again, huh? Yeah, six nice. nothing. Damn it. Nice. Oh man. I mean, it's, I shouldn't say nice because so I, I really I think the Bruins didn't play and we've been down like nine nothing. I really oh. want the Islanders to win. I did. Just because I didn't want Tampa. They're just so lacking them. Yeah, they are. Marky, how you doing, buddy? Doing good, dude. Happy to be here. Nice. Getting ready Happy. for the big trip in a couple of days with Coastal and you know, but mm -hmm. here we got business to do here, but uh, we got ourselves a hell of a week planned when we go out to Denver. A little bit of wrestling. Yeah. A little bit of common Just a little bit. Yeah. Like four days. Actually wrestling in a ring. It's going to be awesome. I, I will be I ever. will be watching on Friday uh, on twitch.tv slash Rocky Mountain Pro. Yep. Uh, the Colorado uh, Cup. Colorado I'll Cup. Figure because... out how to get Twitch TV. <laughs> If you it's have a, an Xbox, you can do it right on your it, Xbox. It's uh, an it's app a, on your you phone. can do it on your computer. Yeah. It's an app okay. on your phone. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. Actually, just, I'll be in I'll be at the cottage this weekend. So I won't be watching anything. That's all right. There'll be YouTube videos up on the channels and stuff. Yeah. And I'm not letting this oh, yeah. opportunity go by. No, no, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna like whore out everywhere I can as much as what we do out on the socials. And and uh, folks as as a, <laughs> if I can. As as a reminder. Uh, episode 69 of Ripping the Rack podcast is oh, coming yes. up in 11 more weeks. Um, do one of you guys want to promote this real quick? No, it's why don't you just keep Tim going? No, we yeah. want Tim Matero to, to, to promote I'm not, Tim no, Matero. No, because I get accused <laughs> of talking about myself all, all about. the time. It's all about so, Tim Matero. Episode so, number 69. Nice. Nice. Will be if anybody's familiar with the old school Friars Club roasts, or if you've watched Comedy Central and they've done the roast of somebody, whoever, like where all the their celebrity friends get together and everybody gives everybody a giant ration of shit, but it's all because they're such good friends. On episode 69, 11 weeks from now, I believe, yes, will be the Rip in the Rack Club roast of Timotero. We will not hold back. We no. will tell Tim everything that we bit. think of Tim. We will tell each other what we think of each other because that's part of it too. Uh, we have to part give of each other too. a it little is, bit. Yes. Uh, but tune in for that. Please do us a favor. If you know Tim, if you've ever known Tim, more importantly, even if you don't know Tim, <laughs> yeah. please Just send make fun of him. to RippingTheRackPodcast like, at gmail.com. A 30 to 60 second video of you telling Ripping the Rack podcast what you think what of Tim, Tim Matero. Matero means to you. What has he done for you? How has he influenced you? And I stress, please, if you don't know Tim, it's even more important if you don't know him. 
to send us a 30 to 60 second video so that we could show Tim in all appreciation everything <laughs> that he is worth in this game. Please let us celebrate Tim Matero. All you have to do is look at him, and you already have a 90 second video of how to make fun of him. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, the phone's ringing. Uh, by the bell. Oh. oh God! That'll stop in a minute. <laughs> I can't, that's I, I that's. How is the that's, phone ringing at the bowling alley in Amesbury? I'm in Denver, but yet I just shut off the ringer. That's How amazing. Are these things that I'm is check amazing. That's crazy. You are out. a magician. A magician. You, be, you become a dad, and you're just everywhere. You yes. just know what's up. Damn right. Yes. So, looking forward to episode 69 already. That is going to be a great fucking show. I mean, that's no. It's going to be. I can't wait to have my moment where I can say what I want to say about you guys. God, this do is, I wish this, this is was what in I person. do on a regular basis. Oh this my God, this true. is my Graceland. I, I know <laughs> you're my Graceland. This you are. I think Calvin's the roast master. <laughs> he would be. I think actually, oh man, if we could have ever done this in person with a bunch of the guys getting together and if Cal could be the roast master of this whole thing, Dude, oh, this is goodness. a million hit video on YouTube. Jesus Christ. We could listen, we got worlds next year, because I guarantee our Canadian we're Canadians, we're coming back. Next year, instead of the poker tournament, we're gonna do roast. Oh my god. We'll have roast night. You show oh, up. Oh my god. You show up, and if you want to roast, you show up and it'll be fucking yep. Oh great. my god. But please, please, if you do that, make sure to take the friggin' joke. Please, yeah, under, yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to that's, put a disclaimer. That, yeah. It's 2021. There has to be a disclaimer. Yes. These are jokes. We yeah. love each other in real life. We're all best of buds, but that's why we do this to each that's, other because yes. we love each other. Yes. Yeah. Please, please understand, folks. When I roast these guys, it is going to be so out of love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know about the respect part, but it's going to be so out of love. It's the same amount of love that you show when you pick up your dog's soiled pee pad (laughs) off the floor. And you love the fact that it's just not on the floor anymore. That's love. That's what we have. That's that love. And you go go put it on your neighbor's doorstep. (laughs) Light it on fire and ring the doorbell and just run away. Yeah. Hey, what do you call a man who's crying while pleasuring himself? Tim Matero. Tim Matero. (laughs) A tearjerker. (laughs) A Tia Jerka. Okay, that one's still 19 <laughs> levels better than the other one from last week. <laughs> yes, Look, from last week. I had actually really good feedback. People were dying in the first, like, they were actually <laughs> laughing in the first, like, oh five or God. ten minutes of that show last week. Oh, oh goodness. Jesus Sure Christ. they were, Tim. They were. I'm just telling you, especially me. Yeah, I was a fake crowd we put up, you know, around the border. Those people aren't real. That's the Matrix, oh. bud. Um, I don't know. It was fun. It was funny. I laughed. Oh, so episode 69. <laughs> Get it? 69? <laughs> yeah. This is why we're doing it, Tim. Just for I you. Know. Yep. It's, so I know. It's got the joke, bud. I, you know <laughs> what? <laughs> I might start roasting now. I won't. Tim, I don't even. I don't even start, dude. I don't even I'm like 375 per pound. You got a long ass time to go. You're going to roast me. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, you can't, you can't, you can't make fun of yourself. That takes the jokes away from us. Yeah, you're not allowed to roast. You gonna tell me I'm fat? I didn't wake up one day just like this shit. Oh, <laughs> oh, speaking of, it wasn't like I went to sleep, you know, Marky size, and I woke up and went, "Oh shit, what happened?" Like, <laughs> you know, you know that the look, I am, I'm obviously, I'm a short dude. Okay, I get you're vertically it. Vertically challenged. I'm, I'm vertically challenged. I had someone, this was a, like a year or two ago, literally ask me, have you always been short? <laughs> to a nope. point where I looked at to a point where I looked at him for a second and said, uh, at one point I was like six five. And, and I they just, looked at me decided to chop off my legs. So. And they were like, uh, yeah, that, I, I guess that really didn't come out the way like to, <laughs> what you no, think I was God. born. Like I was born five foot five and I just stayed this for 50 years? Yeah. Like, been like, you, no, it just had an unfortunate accident with a hammer one day. <laughs> you know, I had knee replacement surgery. They took the big ones out, put the little ones in by mistake. <laughs> oh, my God. Did it, you it, guys it just... see my post? 
about the uh, the girl. I think it was last year, anyways, that she posted it. But that she wanted to get rid of Father's Day because it was offensive to single mothers. Yes. Yes. Okay. Comments like that is the reason I am done with this world. I can't. I can't deal with people like. It's just so stupid. Were you always that short? Are you fucking kidding me? Seriously. I, like, I like, tell Kelly that stupid uh, people should wear signs. So if you go up to them in a store, you're like, hey, can you help me find... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see your sign. Yeah. <laughs> you know not to go to them for useful information. Like, oh my God, it hurt my head. Like, why do people have such stupid questions? Because they thought that they don't understand that there was already a world here before they came into it. Uh, and they think that what they know is smarter than everybody else, and they don't realize that, dude, you and a mosquito could have a fucking IQ contest, and you'd win by one. So just <laughs> stop. Stop. The internet needs to stop. Yeah. It needs to stop. I've, it's, it's bad, because I've unfollowed a few people, like a few of my Facebook friends, because of posts that they've made or oh, yeah. over yeah. this pandemic, mm -hmm. over yeah. this everything i'm just oh I've, over it. i have i have unfollowed i've stayed friends with them but i have unfollowed a bunch of people that yep. um it's not even that they have different views than me because i i, I don't They're care if you have different open views to me. anybody else's views <laughs> thank that's you that's the problem yeah yeah we, thank you. it's healthy to disagree i love the disagreement because we absolutely can talk. we can yeah. come to some kind of midpoint we can have a discussion about why you think a and i think b let's have that discussion but the minute mm -hmm. they say no i'm not talking to you you're stupid you think that now right. you've got a brick wall and the problem yep. is there's too many brick walls that feel like they can influence other people into becoming brick walls and right. when we have more brick wall i don't know if you ever guys ever seen the movie idiocracy oh my god yes movie oh, yeah. right? yes I, I smell a lot of friggin' parallels from that movie to what's happening about with a lot of the social media advent, it was supposed to bring us together. I don't think anything in history has ever divided us more. No. I, I really don't think anything's ever divided us more. No, no like, I don't no. Even like Facebook anymore. I'm a Twitter guy. I because Twitter, at least I can filter out what I don't want to see completely. Well, you can filter out Facebook as well. You can click the button and it just says no, because some of those it. people in my family. Well. <laughs> I have family I don't even have on Facebook. <laughs> Me too. I, I mean, I've I've unfollowed, a, like I said, I've unfollowed some really good friends that yeah. I've known for years. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still friends on Facebook with them. I'm still, I'll, you know, every once in a while, I'll go to their page. I'll just see what they're smoking for crack this week. And I just. That was one way to put it. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. That was one way to put so, it. I get what you're laying down. Like this. You I'm, get what I'm laying down. Like I'm picking up what you're laying down. Yeah. but that was that was unique. I I, I am <laughs> over 35, so I have to say this. I was on the TikTok the other day. The, the TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I'm that age now, and I got down this rabbit hole of these people that say they're time travelers. Oh, now, not yeah. that I believe these fucking people, but it's fun to think. Just to be like, oh, what do they think is going to happen in the future? And then you're like, wow, they have a lot of tinfoil on their head. Okay, yeah. and you move on to the next one. And it's just like some of the stuff you're like, well, that doesn't sound bad. However, you know? however, Matt Groening is a time traveler. I believe, yeah. yes. I oh, believe yes. he knows. Like, it's ridiculous how much stuff he's been bang on. Yeah. Like, what's happened from it's episodes too of The Simpsons. beyond a coincidence. Right. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. So, I, um, and then another stupid argument is thinking that John Rahm is the best golfer in the world. Oh my God. Like how can I think that's, think the, that's, the, the, you know, that's, the, the, that's not a the stupid people, argument at all. The people that think John Rahm is the best golfer in the world. W would be the world golf ranking system. Cause he is um, number one now with his win yesterday. He is, did he win the tournament yesterday? What did he win? Yes, he did. He made two of the best putts in U.S. Open history. Of the well, last okay, goal. let's let's not. Let's Even keep Jack the said they down were very clutch in his very good okay. Facebook post about that. Very stuff. yes, very clutch does not mean two of the greatest putts ever in the history of the U.S. Open. I mean, I think they were. I think you're. I think I think you're wrong. See, okay, that's our opinion. That. That's what the great thing about it is. You <laughs> can think that, and that's and that's okay. 
Um, opinions, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got everyone one. has one. Everybody's yes. got one, and they all smell funny. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know what? It's just like a penis too. It's all fun and great to have one. Just don't take it out, and wave it in other people's face when they don't ask for it. Why not? What? Why, why can't not? I do that? Why? What are you talking do... about? That's Ryan, why that girl got did? so mad. No. Yeah. Oh no. Oh shit. You got Brian. girls mad at you? No, That's girls. That's why she like got mad. Wait, I, wait, I, wait, oh wait. Okay. okay so, I mean, so Tim no, has honey, jokes. I have jokes. I swear. So the cashier said, uh, strip down in front of me. And then the cop showed up before I realized she was talking about the debit card. <laughs> you know, because oh, you're strip. I guess it doesn't work now. With the, <laughs> Calvin's got the chip. so. <laughs> they just I didn't laugh. Chip. Yeah, I didn't either. I didn't get it. <laughs> no, I get it. I just... <laughs> So, Did you say something funny? So what happened? It's something funny. funny. Tim something funny. I said something funny. You asked me you something funny. Something funny. <laughs> <laughs> so um, who actually watched the golf this weekend? Did anybody? I watched some of it. I watched I some of it. I saw some of it on Saturday. Like, I watched like the biggest choke. I watched the end of it in history. I, I what John Rom did. That was like everybody was plus something except for John Rom on the day. I I loved seeing. Uh, Bryson De- DeChambeau absolutely implode. Mm-hmm. He had the lead. He had the lead with nine holes to go. Yeah. And went seven over on the back nine. And then what? in his interview, oh, the best part is in his interview, he says the rails did not come, the train did not come off the rails. Then how bad would it have been Dude, if they did? You yeah. were seven over on your back nine, like hitting like shots that would just. It, I, I'm I'm not a Bryson fan. I am. I am. I'm not a Bryson hater. I just don't like the dude. I think he is bad for golf. Like he just. He's the opposite of what Tiger Woods was in '97. Yeah, but even Shooter McGavin thought Happy Gilmore was bad for golf, and look what Happy Gilmore did for <laughs> golf in that moment. That is true. Happy yeah. Gilmore brought a whole new audience in of beer swilling, sex in the woods, having all kinds of new people. Yep, which is, which is what Tiger did with the game. Please don't pay attention to anything I just said. <laughs> yeah. We did. <laughs> Fuck you. Mark, you know Happy Gilmore's not real, right? <laughs> no, don't say that. He's a real person. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I, I... I don't know. I like Torrey Pines as a course. I still struggle with it as a U.S. Open course. I think they should have had it at Spyglass. Everybody could have had a lot of fun in that win. <laughs> I I don't know. I just always look at the U.S. Open as like a Pinehurst and Pebble Beach. You know, uh, maybe Whistling Straits is one of the newer courses. What about Beth Page? I was just Beth thinking Page. about that Beth Page Black in my head. When I think U.S. Yep. Open, that's what I think. I think yep. Beth Page. Uh, Marion uh, in Pennsylvania, the Country mm-hmm. Club. Uh, Quail you know, Hollow. Hazeltine. I, I don't know. I, I something about so Maybe it's because there is a regular tour stop at Torrey Pines every year that I... Mm. I just think that your U.S. Open should not be at a regular tour stop. Yeah, yeah but is yeah, it? You it always have Torrey Pines course. isn't a big tournament anymore, though. Sure, it, it is. Used to, what the AT and T? That's Tiger's. It's one of Tiger's tournaments. I thought. No, I don't. It, no, he did not anymore. No, not since the uh, the unfortunate accident back in two thousand and what. Oh, when he took the eight iron upside the head from his flight? Yeah, that one. That one, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the first, first car accident. The first car accident, yeah. Yeah, the first one. I don't I don't know. I just... And I get Pebble Beach does have a regular tour stop. You know, yeah, the it's eight, got the, the, the Byron Nelson. Byron Nelson. No, yeah. Byron Nelson is in Texas. I thought it was the AT&T Byron Nelson Classic. No. There's like it's the golf is turning into NASCAR <laughs> with Oh, I did see know. that. Who has a oh no, did you see in football Jimmy Kimmel has a bowl named after him now? What? Yeah, there's the Jimmy oh, Kimmel Bowl. No oh, way. Jesus. Yeah, look it up for real. Google no it. Way. No kidding. I saw something about this the other day and I don't want to go into why they did it. I I don't I, nope. Don't want to. However, 
I will say. Um, you guys will have to tell me off air why they did it because I don't. I just saw that he had a bull named after him. I don't know how to pronounce this guy's last name. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders defensive end, Carl, is it Nasib? Nasib? Oh, is he God. the guy who got pulled over with the Uzi? Nope. Nope. Oh. He is. He has become the first active NFL player to come out as gay. Oh. Okay. Good for him. Yep. Good for him. Good for him. I, I, I hope he's still a good football player. Me too. I'm, That's all I give a shit. I, I don't care. That's all I, I hope care he's about. still like, treated the, as an equal football player in the league. Agreed. That's, I, yep. There should be no reason why he should catch any other flack for anything. Good for him, what he does at his house. I just want to watch a good football game. Yep. I just, I don't know. I found that interesting. That came, that that happened today. Um, no, that was the Kansas City Chiefs guy. I'm sorry. He got pulled over and he had an Uzi in his uh, Lamborghini. Oh. Oh. Right. I'm standing citizen. Uzi. Yeah. That, uh, that might be a bad thing. Might well, right. considering they're illegal, yeah. Yeah, that, Every that other might, day yeah. Of the week it is. You know, I, I don't th- think I you think could just a- go down to, you know, Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop, like, I'd like that Uzi right there. It's not, you know, you can't go to Ammunition here in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Ammunition. <laughs> um, Calvin, our Canadian yes. correspondent. What's up? Would you like to talk hockey? We can talk hockey if you want. Look at the little face. Look at how oh, yeah. it's lit we up like talk, a Christmas we tree. Could talk, right we can talk hockey if you want. No, I'm 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 not in my happy spot with hockey because there's too many dumb Habs fans who think the referees are like oh. Boston Bruins fans. They're like okay, don't do no 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 no. no. I wasn't even going to bring ding, that up. Ding, but ding. Isn't it amazing how every Canadians fan who gives we Bruins fans a ration of shit. Every yeah. single time there's a game and the Bruins don't commit the penalties, but the other team does. Now, will you stop calling the damn bowling alley? Who is this? I have no wife. idea who that is. It's not my wife. Um, when all of a my sudden, wife. when the Bruins, it's your wife. That's exactly <laughs> who it is. Um, when something happens with the refs and the Bruins fans say anything about the refs, it's always the Canadians fans. Oh, come on. What are you doing? Blah, 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 blah. Now, because the Canadians aren't getting away with being this year's Olympic diving team in the playoffs. <laughs> they're not getting away with it. That they're getting called on everything that they're doing. Now, all of a sudden, oh, the referees don't like no. the Canadians. No, see, that's, that's where, that's where we're, you're, you're kind of wrong. What the problem is, is that the referees are not calling anything. So that's what Montreal is getting upset about. The last game, not this one that just happened, the game before, Corey Perry got a stick up in the nose. And now I think he has like, I don't know if it's like 60 or 70 stitches right there. And the referees missed it. And just everybody's up in arms about it. And he didn't play the rest of the game. They ended up winning the game in overtime. But he didn't play the rest of the game. And then he came back and you can see the stitches on his nose. And then last game, there was like punches to the head right in front of the referee there was cross-checking to the neck right in front of the referee and they're not making any calls so that's why the Habs fans are all cranky that the referees aren't making calls and sorry if you're a Habs fan deal with frustrating. it frustrating I know <laughs> sorry Habs fans deal with it but they only see it from the Habs fans point of view saying like oh my god if we would have gotten all these calls we would have probably won the game and it's like no the referee didn't make any calls. There was plenty of Habs penalties that didn't get called. But no, it has to be the referee's fault that they lost the game. Of course it so. wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't that they stopped playing in the third period, gave up the game-tying goal, and then lost it in overtime. It was the fact that the referees didn't make the penalty calls. I, I have, um, now that the Bruins are out, um, I am a huge Vegas Knights fan. Um, have been. I'm a longtime Vegas Knights fan. Yeah, have been for years. Have actually, you oh, know, like eight nine years now. He's loved. No, nope, three years. Uh, they've been in the league for three years. Yeah. Um, I I will admit that when they came into the league, I did <laughs> I did follow them. Yeah. For one reason, and that's because Angie and I we vacation in Vegas. That's where we go once a year. We love the city. What they do in Vegas is absolutely tremendous. Like the. City has embraced them as a sports team. 
they sell out every every game is sold out guaranteed um, you know the atmosphere in there like i haven't been to a game out there i'd like to that's on my bucket list so to speak right uh, but i have fall i have followed them um i'm sure the raiders are going to do the same thing in vegas oh my god i can't wait for them to to have actual people in the stands for for the game right? yeah um i I want to talk real quickly um, about the fact that they had the balls to sit Flurry and go yeah. with a young goaltender. I wouldn't and I say want to young. Talk, Not young, young. Well, but he's he's young. Yeah, he, compared to Flurry, yes. Yes, he's not. He's not an established goaltender. Like, uh, yeah, he carried them to the. He carried them in the playoffs last year. And he was their starter coming into this year. He was their he number one. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. He carried okay. them. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, so um, whatever. <laughs> he, again, I just like the fact that they had the balls to sit Flurry and and start him and they won. Yeah. When the Bruins, who had a clearly injured Tuka Rask, clearly mm. lacked now mobility. Until January. He's now yeah. up until January He's with now his Yep, had hip torn hip labrum. Yeah, and they don't like you pulled him in the third period. And Isn't you started... he a butterfly goalie? Yes, uh, yes. So he is what they call yes. a butter. He yes. is what they call a. Butterfly so that had goalie. to be yeah. extremely painful to try and do with a hip labrum. So yes. the game before <laughs> they they sat him in the third period and they put Swayman in. Yeah, everyone, myself included, said okay. Tuka, Tuka's obviously something's wrong. His mobility's not there. They're going with Swayman. They're getting him in because he hasn't played in a month, and they're going to start him the next game. This is to give him some game experience so they can get in to the next game. And you come to the next game, and you start Tuka Rask in a must-win game, who clearly is hurt. It was a bad move. First it one. was a very even when I was watching it when he was in the nets. I'm like, wait a minute, Swayman did a good job the yep. other day. Why, mm-hmm. why Swayman? And he's made a lot of noise around here, you know. Yes, when he, he did get his starts at the end of the regular season, and kid looked good, and yes. the team rallied and played good around him. Like that's a big thing. You as the goalie, you're the new guy. These are the established forwards, and you know that you got to play up to their level so they have confidence in you behind them. And he did nothing but that in a game. I'm sure he's done it in a practice scenario many times behind the scenes, but he did it many times in game scenarios too. It, the fact that they started Tuca in that last game, it baffled my friggin' mind. And then was yeah. it the next day or the day after that, they were like, oh, Tuca Rask is emergency surgery is coming up for his hip and this and that. And it's like, how did, first of all, if you're Bruce Cassidy, how did you not know that? Which mm-hmm. he had to. Right. Yeah. He and had secondly, to I'm, I understand there's a thing with going with experience as opposed to youth. But the other day on the bowling podcast, we talked about how a bunch of us went with some youth and the youth stepped up and performed in a pressure situation. Give the kids a chance to get out there and get it done. Let the guys score the goals in front of him and trust this kid to keep the puck out of the net. Yeah. I only hope to God if there is an expansion draft next year for the Kraken that Swayman is the protected goaltender. I really hope he's the protected goaltender. Yeah, because they yes. can only protect one, right? Correct, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. I hope it's him. I really, yeah. really he's hope the future. it's him. He's your next five to ten years. Because I think he's young as hell, too. He's 21, 22 years old. I think he's a young kid. Yep. And he's, he's only going to get bigger. He's only going to get better. And as his XP bar gro- goes up in his career, he's only going to become better. He's, yep. your, mm-hmm. he's your Tuka Rask when Tim Thomas was getting in the end Exactly, of his Calvin. Yes. yes. And and I will not pile on. I'm not a Tuka hater. I am a fan of Tuka no, Rask. I, no, me neither. Me I too. I think I think he gets a very bum rap from the fans, the Bruins fans. Boston sports fans are assholes, and we know yeah, it. Yeah, and you know, we we're do. Very fickle. And, oh, and, and you're right. He we're is, assholes, and are. we know it. <laughs> Tuka Rask is arguably the greatest goaltender that the Bruins have ever had, if you go according to all the stats. You got to look at the stats, his saves percentage, his goals against. Look at them all. He is arguably the greatest goaltender the Bruins have had. 
The only problem is, is he never led them to a Stanley Cup championship like Tim mm-hmm. Thomas. Because people say Tim Thomas is the greatest goaltender. Well, no, Tuca's got 50 more playoff wins than Tim Thomas. Yeah. Tim Thomas had an amazing run in 2011 in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. He, stood he stood on his head his the whole head. time. Yes. Absolutely. Amazing. A couple times, literally. literally yeah, wicked. Literally. Mm-hmm. On his head with a stick. He, in that cup series, he got very, like, Hasek-esque. 7 nothing. Yes. 7 nothing guy? Yeah. They're, up, they're up a touchdown. And they're on a five-minute power play. Oh, oh, oh what God. time? Where is it in the game? It just started the third period. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just pull the goalie and wave the flag. They might, they might yeah. put up 10. Because they'll probably We're score done. another one on this power play. Um, five minute. What's a five minute? Unsportsmanlike? Well, uh, usually. Just a five four, major? It's, it's a five, major. Five minutes yeah. a major. No, I know that, but I was kind of yeah. figuring out what the call was. Like, I didn't oh. major them. Oh, oh, fighting, roughing, elbowing. Yeah, but fighting is not a power play. It, it can be. be severe. It can be. A well, it can, it can be if the one guy is doing all the fighting. Yeah. Um, and I will say real quickly, we'll go, I want to jump to the Olympics just a quick second. Sure. And the only reason I want to jump to the Olympic qualifying is there was a kid from Maine that made the 800-meter final. Good for him. Uh, he finished fourth in the 800-meter final. I don't know if they take top four for the Olympics. I don't. I, I think, think that's they, I think he's the alternate. Two. I think he's the alternate. Is it top three? Yeah. And I, think fourth? Top, I thought it was I top think two top... and third is the alternate. It's top three, and then there's a travel alternate. I believe the third is the alternate that goes in case somebody gets hurt while they're awesome. there. So he would be the one that would go if somebody couldn't go. Yeah. He I ran smell his it. I smell personal Tonya Harding situation. He ran his personal best. Uh, he's from Lewiston. Uh, graduated from Lewiston High School. Uh, went to Division One. I. I forgot what school he went to. Um, so Isaiah Harris, again, great, great showing. Yeah, good uh, to hear of a local guy making some noise on a national level. That's fantastic. Yeah, just <laughs> missed. Uh, I think uh, third place was 144.14, and he was 144.58. Wow. So, oh, geez. That's three tenths of a second. Four one hundredths of a second. Or, yeah. yeah. So we like have, uh, I have a guy I work with. I'm going to see if I can Google it right quick. But uh, he broke the, I think it was the Canadian record um, of the, the, like, the squat press. Oh, wow. Oh, and shit. He, he did 650 pounds. <laughs> Wow! On his shoulder, squat and up. Oh man! You work with you know that. that guy? Yeah, I work Don't with. Don't ever mess and with that guy. Trust me, that's he's, incredible. He's and even worse, he's no bigger than me. Really now? Yeah, he's a Jeez. tiny. Little I guy. I did five and a quarter in high school, and that was enough. I thought I was like my hips were going to explode. Yeah, and I like that was on the shoulders down, ninety degrees parallel. And then back up. Jesus. So I just looked it up. Um, a National Olympic Committee can enter up to three qualified athletes in the men's 800 meter event if all athletes meet the entry standard or qualify by ranking during the qualifying period. Uh, the qualifying standard is 145.2. So he would have qualified if he had finished wow. in third place. So he will be the. Uh, uh, he will be. Oh, I didn't see that though. The uh, Donovan Brazier, who is the reigning world champion, failed to qualify for the 800 meter. Oh, shit. rough day. Rough oh, day. He, in finished, the office. he finished last. That's a rough day. Oh, that's a rough I, day. I do like the thing I saw on Facebook where they said that every Olympic event should have one just regular person in it, just for reference. Just As for like reference. The, the average scale of regular, like the yeah. rest of us. You imagine that? Yeah. All right, Brian, you ever done the luge? No? Okay, buddy, just lay on this sled. Here you go. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Tim, you will now be running the 100 meter. Yeah. Great. <laughs> awesome. And right and next Marky, to you, you have the marathon. Yeah. Yep. No. Maki, you're going to be going into the like 500 kilogram deadlift. 
<laughs> so uh, go have fun with that. No, yeah. No. Gonna, I'm going to go wrestle. I'm, I'm just going to go wrestle with you guys. Go, okay, good. We need an entrant in the heavyweight division. Here, go see what yeah. you can do with those yeah. guys. No, could you imagine, um, Tim, you have boxing. <laughs> yeah. And Tim's out in three seconds. <laughs> Tim, wait, what's it? Tapping there's, out? Uh, there's there's rumors Tim, that, Tim, there's no tapping out in boxing. There's rumors everywhere. Tim threw the fight and him and his opponent are just taking the millions. Tim's like, absolutely, I threw the fight, yes. Absolutely, yes. Disqualify me. Oh, wow. That's anyway, uh, so hockey, hockey, hockey. Back to hockey real quick. So, uh, yeah, so back to hockey real quick. So yeah. even even more the balls that they had to put Leonard in net. Game four, you're in Montreal. Mm-hmm. You're down 2-1. If you lose the game, you're probably done. Because you're down 3-1, and it's hard to win three games in a row. But also the fact that the last game that he played was the very first game against Colorado, and he let in seven goals. Yep. So to put him back in the net after that game, like two weeks later, to give him that, like, oh, man. that. But, but does that say something more about of a, Flurry, though? Does that... That that any of those things, if I'm a coach, I'm looking at those things and I'm like, yeah, no, I still want Flurry in there. But right. after Flurry's little gaff the other day when he tried to clear the puck out and he just centered it right in front of the net and that guy, the guy in Montreal, had a tip in for the game tying goal, yeah. which was ridiculous. And then the, I mean, I understand the little temp, the tantrum that he threw afterwards. You wonder if it's something up with Flurry if he just needed a damn break, you know, if maybe the pressure of it was just getting in his head so much. If his body was hurting, so I mean, I don't know. We don't know because they never I mean, say these things. But and he's, he, you know, that's the one thing with hockey that always cracks me up because it's always upper body injury, lower body injury. Yeah, yeah. You know, in in basketball, the upper body injury is forty like fourteen shattered ribs and a punctured lung. Upper body injury. Yeah, upper yeah. body injury, questionable. Questionable. Yeah. Uh, he he's he tore his heart muscle away from questionable whatever. If he he's will questionable live. if he's going to return in this game. Oh, and back life. on the and back on the bench. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um. Okay, so I just found I just found the thing about the buddy I work with. So he's twenty six years old. He is in the eighty three kilogram class. So he's only eighty three kilograms, whatever that is for you guys for weight. But one hundred and forty eight <laughs> pounds, probably something like that. One hundred fifty pounds. Yeah, it's not much. Yeah, he dead he, smaller than me. Right. Oh, uh, no, he's probably a little bigger than you. All right. Yeah. Maybe anyway, off a little bit. He, uh, he did a squat of 292 kilograms, which is 645 pounds. Jesus. Un- unofficial Canadian record. He did a bench press of 402 pounds and a deadlift of 662 pounds. Wow. My best deadlift was 600. Man. And this, like I said, this, this guy's no bigger than me. Like he's just eighty three kilograms is one hundred and eighty pounds. So oh, he's, he's one hundred and eighty like five yeah. pounds heavier than me. Right. And wow. I cannot lift a quarter ton. And he more dead- than a quarter ton. <laughs> he deadlifted six hundred. He could pick up a smart car. Essentially, yes. Jesus. Oh, there it is. Five foot nine, one hundred and seventy nine pounds. That's oh how big God. he is. That is. Imagine him running into you. Like that is a car. Like no. Boom. Yeah, that's that's was, impressive. When when they when they told me that he did that, holy crap, man! I was I ever just floored of how yeah, he, wicked. Oh Jesus. yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Wow. That's that's impressive. that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So hockey. You know, what else, you know what else is impressive? The fact that Philadelphia can't get past the third round <laughs> into the finals. <laughs> I'm telling you, Canadians excel at segways. <laughs> they excel at segways, man. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's just it's it's baffling. You know, I don't think you can trust the process anymore. And well, one thing, one thing that I I'm just I'm just I can't understand it is how some point guards who are supposed to be shooters are so bad at free throws. It baffles me. You have nobody in front of you. All you have to do is shoot the ball in the net. And you're a shooter. You're a point guard. That's like your whole thing is shooting the ball. So 
I am not a Ben Simmons fan. Neither. I was I was I have never been a Ben Simmons fan. I wasn't a fan of him when he was at LSU. Right. I think he's incredibly athletic. Yeah. And he's gifted athletically, but I he is not a good basketball player and and they they overpaid mightily for him. Yes. To be what what did he put up? He put up no shots in the fourth quarter last night. If yeah, he was shorter, he'd be a mason because he'd be a bricklayer. He can't. <laughs> you, you can't. You can't. Um, they took him out of some games in the last 30 seconds because he was afraid of getting fouled because he can't shoot free throws. Right. They took him out. Just, just. Is off, he having a Chuck Knobloch, do you think? Remember back in the day when oh, Chuck couldn't throw, boy, second, yeah, throw he first the base? Yips. I remember that he couldn't. You, you he couldn't think throw Ben Simmons has the yips, the line, like he just can't shoot. No, well, it's, he but can't. it's been it's been forever because I I've gone up against him in my fantasy pools. <laughs> it's great because I could always win the free throw percentage. Because he can't, he can't, <laughs> he can't shoot three pointers. No. So he is the type of player that if I'm guarding him, Don't I'm I'm like, dude, go ahead, be, no, have at it, if, shoot if you're up there. Sh- shooting guard like and you can't shoot what are you doing that's like yeah. i'm a driver for a living but i've never gotten behind the wheel i never like, i don't have my license <laughs> how do you get on that team right how do you get on a team if if your main goal like and i'm not a basketball guy i'm not pretending to understand i even know who this guy is because i don't but just in general if if you're a shooter and that is part of your repertoire of what you do on the team and and they have to take you out at crunch time, because you wouldn't be able to hit the freest of throws. What are you doing? How are you even yeah. on that team? How do you get on a team if, if you can't? I, I don't understand that. He was the number one pick. Yeah. Yeah. He was the number one pick. Yeah. In the draft. Because he's six foot, cause he's six foot ten, and he's a point guard. Yeah. He's, he's wicked defensively. Again. He's good rebounds. He, and he's, he's incredibly basketball. athletic. Yeah. But I swear to God, he hasn't touched a basketball in the gym setting in his life. He always relied no, on, obviously he did, but I'm just saying, he's relied on his athleticism to get him where he is, and it appears as though he's not putting in the work needed to LSU justify. LSU didn't even make the tournament the year he was in college, did nope. they? They made the nope. NIT. I, the only I just, reason I think they made the NIT is so people could watch Ben Simmons play basketball in college. I am oh. I am so happy that Philadelphia lost. So happy. I'm so happy that Atlanta won because I love Clint Capella and I love Trey Young. He's just so fun. Trey Young, Atlanta has turned into a fun team again. Absolutely, there is another team that did what this local Boston Celtics team was afraid to do. They fired their coach halfway through the year and then played outstanding basketball the second half of the year and yeah. had the best we made our coach the- president. We yep yeah, again good move though. I love the trade. True. Yeah. I'm a fan of the trade that he did already. Let's see what else he can do. Um I want to see who they bring in as coach. That's that's I think it's going to be Rick Carlisle. I hope to God it is. You really, you really are a fan of that trade. I am. Who you have? Uh, point, who you have for a point guard now? Um, I'm that's smart. I'm a, uh, yeah, but smart if they find him, if they not, sign him, he's not anything special. So, right now, I want to see what they do. I like the trade for a number of reasons, and number one is, um. They finally money won. <laughs> well, you brought in a 22 year old seven foot two center who can clog up the middle and Moses <coughs> and who dominated the last like three weeks of the season yep. because he didn't they didn't have anything to play for, so they just threw him in there to go play. And he played, yeah. and mm-hmm. um, you weren't going to get a better player at this at number 16. No, than that kid, you're not going to. And you get you get Horford back, who was a – he's not the player he was when he was with Atlanta. Right. He's not. 
But everybody always said he was a great clubhouse presence. And I think he can be a better clubhouse. Pre- and they said that the same thing about Kemba. The yeah. difference is Kemba couldn't play. He was injured all the time. Right. Yeah, he was beat up when he got here. And you were stuck with his contract for three years. With with Al's contract, you're only on the hook really for the first year. Right. And then it's like there's money involved after year number two that becomes much more cap and uh, a cap friendly hit, so mm-hmm. to speak. Um. So I do like to trade. Um. I'll see from a point guard standpoint. I'll see what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think Peyton Pritchard is ready to be a starting point guard in the NBA. Oh, God, no. Um, I like him. But he could be a good backup to Smart if you sign Smart. If you sign Smart. The problem yeah. with Smart is whoever they get as coach needs to look at him and say, you get two shots a game and that's it. Please don't yeah. shoot ever again. Pass the ball to Tatum. and <laughs> You have him... to be wide open. You know. But, yeah, yeah. no, I'm, uh, I like to trade. And I like the fact that we have four teams in the NBA Finals right now left that, you know, what was it? Milwaukee won in 1971. Yep. That was the last time they won. Uh, yeah. Atlanta's never won. They've These are the four teams who haven't won since the merger or whatever yeah. they call it, the, the association merger or whatever. So, Well, what is it? Suns have never won. Yeah, the Suns have never won. The Clippers, Clippers have, have never, never won. won. And then Atlanta, Atlanta hasn't won, won since. Yeah, they won with what? Who was their? Who was their big superstar back in the seventies and sixties? I was a little bit before my time. Robertson or something. Oscar, Oscar Robertson. Robertson yeah. and Pete he Maravich. Play, and did he play for Atlanta? I thought he, I thought he did. played for St. Louis, but I don't know. Anyways, and then yeah, and then uh, Milwaukee won in seventy-one. Yeah. So, yeah, none of those. Is that when they had Big Red Bill Walton? Milwaukee? No, he played for Portland. Oh. 71 was Lou Alcindor, also known as Karim Abdul-Jabbar. What did you call him? Who? Karim Abdul-Jabbar, what did you call him? Lou Alcindor. Lou Alcindor, that's his real name. That was his real name. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, he he did uh, what, like, Muhammad Ali did. He... Got into, Change. I believe, Islam, and he changed his name. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. He so, went to, of, he went to UCLA of, as Luel Sindor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. I didn't and know funniest that. cameo in any movie alive in the movie. Yes. Airplane. Airplane. <laughs> funniest cameo in history. So, look, we're... kid, you tell your dad how hard it is to block three guys in the paint and still put up 20 points, all right? Then you tell me. Kids like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anywho, folks, is that the show already? That That's the show already. Has yeah. it really been forty-five minutes? It's been forty-eight minutes. We what? went over. Wow. So, I would like to wish the Coastal Crusader and Marky Pens tremendous luck in their uh, professional wrestling debut. Thank you, sir. Um, you thank you. Much. I hope, hope you, you bring nice home the, uh, you know, make us proud, bring home the title. Thanks, Cal. You <laughs> no know? I hope you get a receipt right in the face. Just... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 yeah. The whole point is to dodge the receipt. Uh, yes. Yes. Make it yes. Yes. Really At least uh, my whole point is to dodge the receipt. Yeah. Coastal is one of those guys that can go in there and actually dole out a few. You wouldn't I might be able to give a few. I just don't want to catch a potato in the face. Just don't go against filter, then you'll be fine. True story. I just, yeah. So good luck this weekend. Uh, Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Again, very much. Friday. Have, a blast. Uh, have fun. Tonight, you Friday really night. Enjoy it. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Six o'clock Eastern time. You can check these two out on twitch.tv slash uh, Rocky Mountain Pro. Yeah, it's on Rocky Correct. Mountain's channel. I believe it's six the o'clock Colorado Eastern. Cup. Is the is the pre pre show is six o'clock Eastern? Yes, it's uh, then, a pre show, and then they'll be uh, on Friday evening. There's the first leg of the two night event. The first leg is called the Colorado Cup, and that's which, what you guys are. Correct. It features a few singles matches of competitors, not necessarily on the milestone card, but other storylines that are wrapping up or beginning. 
And then at the end of that, it culminates in a, at the moment, a 35 man and woman, 35 person Royal Rumble style match where one person comes out and then 30 seconds or a minute later, I believe, or 90 seconds, I'm not sure exactly how they're doing it. The next superstar comes out. And Brian and myself will be two of those 35 superstars. So you don't know at what point you guys are coming out yet. We have not drawn straws yet. No, we will find that out the day of. I mean, haven't you watched wrestling the Royal Rumble? Everybody, every one of the guys has to walk up to the spinner and choose a ball that has the number on the inside. So that's something that we're going to be doing Friday morning. that's not how it really works. See if works. I can get a video that's of exactly it. Mark. How it works. That's, not how it works right? that's exactly how it works, Calvin. I know I know you have your kayfabe, but that's not how it works, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, seen the old Royal Rumbles. That's how it used to work. I am I got it. Man buys numbers. I am really looking forward to seeing you guys out there. Thank you. It's uh, gonna be a blast. I, I, I am honored to be a part of it. I am going to uh video it as much as I can. Um Somebody will have to send me clips because I don't know that I'll, I'll I'll have to watch it some other time. But <laughs> there will be content of Palooza later on the Johnny Death Drop yes. Dudes yeah. and Belts YouTube channel. Uh, I will have some on my own socials on Facebook. I I don't do Twitter, but I do have an Instagram, so there'll be stuff on there. I know I will Brian. Have a lot of stuff on. We'll Twitter. have it all out. We're all going to be vlogging and and just putting because it's we're getting to live a dream right now. Yep. That every one of us had since we were an eight-year-old little boy watching Hulk Hogan or Chief J Strongbow or any whatever you used to watch. Dino Bravo kid, for Timmy. Dino <laughs> Bravo, like when you were watching Ivan those, and you were like, Polish wow. power. Ivan Putsky. I remember Ivan Putsky. He was one of my grandmother's favorites. She hated yeah. him, but he was. She was like, he's a big guy. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, I don't no, know. I'm like, I'm. I I wish you guys well. Have a safe trip. Have a fun trip. Thank you. Um, I'm more afraid of the afraid of the damn plane ride than I am. The guy. So, as we get off here, don't hang up right off. I'm going to want to talk off air for, for a brief sec. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, again, you can see us and listen to us and send all your questions, comments, concerns to Ripping the Rack podcast. Don't forget your 30 to 60 second video. I was going to say it if you I'll let you, yes. I'll let you, I'll let you, <laughs> Marky, you, you finish that part. Uh, you can get all that on ripping the rack podcast at gmail.com. You can reach us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at ripping the rack podcast. Uh, Brian, where else can they hear us? They can hear us on Spotify, Anchor Breaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Podcasts, and wherever else you listen to your podcasts. And Marky. Yes. I would like to ask. <laughs> Everybody who is watching, anybody who's in the room with somebody watching that is not watching, my wife likes to play her games on her phone while I'm watching my YouTube videos. So if you're listening and you're sitting next to somebody and you don't even know Tim Matero, all the better. If you know Tim, or like I said, even more importantly, if you do not know Tim, please send us a 30 to 60 second clip of you telling us what Tim Matero means to you <laughs> means to the game of candle pin bowling or otherwise any other chicanery slash bullshittery that you have been involved with, with our fearless leader, one Mr. Tim Matero, please, because on episode 69, 11 weeks from tonight, we will have the rip in the rack podcast club roast of Tim Matero. Ladies and gentlemen, he has earned this. He has been in it. He's had a 10,000 year candle pin bowling career. <laughs> he's been on this earth since the dinosaurs walked. This dirt. We need your stories. This man remembers the meteor. Okay. We need the stories <laughs> that you have <laughs> of Tim Matero and anything that you've done with Tim Matero. Please send us a 30 to 60 second video. That you clip. can discuss the statute of limitations has run out on. <laughs> I I am ninety nine percent sure podcast at gmail.com. I am ninety nine percent sure that in my lifetime I did nothing that had a statute of limitations qualification to it. Okay. Well that, that just I, means that the roof that is I know of. 
All that, that means is that the roofies worked. That that's all that, that means. That's true. We've all been to the worlds and we've all seen that guy that woke up at like 10 30 in the morning and he forgot to wake up and take a shower. Yeah, we've all seen that guy. You've been that guy. We know you've been that guy. I have not, made not necessarily at the worlds, but just in life. We know you're that guy. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right, folks. Have a wonderful weekend. Good luck to these yes. two. Uh, Calvin, another yeah. great job sitting there looking pretty. I, I'm just making everything look good. He said so much more this episode than he, he did. did on Tuesday, though. He said so much more. It was hockey. He did. <laughs> it was All fun. right. It was Peace out. Expert analysis. Bye, everybody. <laughs>